I am sure that when you are all by yourself, and when you look around the world, and, and you are thinking about things, and you've got these ideas, and you think, well, why are people so stupid? Why don't they try and change this a bit? Have you had that idea? You know, and sometimes you just need to share these ideas because you could have a wonderful new invention. Something which no one else has ever thought about. And I help students to, to think a bit. And one way of thinking more cleverly is to change the shape and size of things. Now, you all know Pritt stick, don't you? Now, what is the shape of Pritt stick? It's round, isn't that so? Pritt stick is round. Now, why do they make it round, do you think? Have you ever wondered? Why don't they just make it square? Because what always worries me about Pritt stick is that if I put this onto a table, it rolls off the table. And when I want to use it on a desk, I always have to take another piece of paper to put underneath the piece of paper I want to put the glue on so that I don't mess on the table. Now, if that was square, it would mean that it will, first of all, not roll off the table. And secondly, I can go into the corner without having to put another piece of paper under the corner. Now, one of my students actually did this. One of my first-year students. I said to them, I want to challenge you to just change the shape and size of something that you brought with you to the classroom today. And she came to me afterwards and she asked me this exact question about shape and size. I came to Stellenbosch University and I met some nice people here and we started with a brand new technique here. Well, they showed me this technique. There was a PhD student that showed me something fascinating. What they do is they take a syringe. You all know what a syringe is. You fill the syringe with a jelly-like substance. We call that a polymer. It's like jelly. You've all seen jelly. And then you apply a current over it. So you put an electric current over it with the anode on that side, the cathode on this side, so you have an electric field. And we make that gel drop out of that syringe into this electric field. And suddenly it just breaks up into millions of little fibers, small little fibers. And they collect then onto a particular surface. You can use any surface there. It's like candy floss in a way. So what we were doing here, we were making this. That is a human hair. What we see over here is a human hair. And that there is what we were making. It's like a little spider thread, spider web, thread of a spider web, or a silkworm. If you played with silkworms and you put them onto a piece of paper and they've actually made silk on a piece of paper. We were making that, excepting we were using an electric process. And then I said, well, okay, what will happen if I put something inside of that fiber that will kill bacteria? It would mean I can now make fibers that kill bacteria. Now that's interesting, because uh, if I took these fibers, and this is what we did, we spin them onto a piece of paper, and uh, we selected a particular antimicrobial compound, something that kills germs, and we put that inside the fiber. Now bacteria cannot go through there anymore. That's the interesting thing, because those little holes there, you can see there's virtually a hole through here. So if we determine the size of that hole there, it is about 12 nanometers. And like you saw there, bacteria are 2,000 nanometers. They can never go through that filter. So what we did was we now had something with which we could filter out bacteria and kill them. And this is what it actually looks like when you do the experiments. On the left hand, on your right hand side here, over here, your left hand side, there are no fibers on that little filter there. This is a little round paper filter about that size. It's the size of a tea bag. On this side, we've got these fibers on the filter. A lot of bacteria growing there. All the blue stuff and the green and the red there. These are bacteria just growing like crazy. Germs growing there. On this side, no germs. You are the first to actually see this prototype where 
we have a little holder like that. And you can unscrew this, and there's already a filter inside there. You see there? So you close it, you screw this into the cap, and now you can actually take filter, take water out of the river, just like this. You screw the cap back on, and you can now drink that water, because that water is no more polluted. It's not any more contaminated.